What is a red flag from an employer that people might not immediately recognize as a red flag? A couple old senior partners, lots of young employees and nothing in between. That means there's no opportunity to move up, they can't get people to stay, and can't get lateral transfers. They work young folks for as long as they can, and the young folks leave once they figure out the company sucks. Everybody is very young in a very old company. Had an interview somewhere they offered 2023 starting. Being new in this field, when they asked how much I was expecting to be paid I said, well you guys are offering 2023 starting and being new in the field I think 20 would be good. Their response was, oh. Well that's kind of a red flag for us. Usually when someone starts with us they'll say, I'll take $17 until I can prove to you that I'm worth the $20, so you'll see why we're hesitant. Dot. My response, then why would you offer $20 at your low end? I didn't get a call back. When you don't get a review until you ask for a raise. Then, all of a sudden, you work is being questioned and you're being berated. They claim that overtime isn't mandatory and workers stay longer by choice. The job title says they're looking to hire rock stars. When they refuse to tell you what your starting salary would be or when they just avoid the question altogether. Like I didn't apply to the job to be a part of some family work culture. I came here to get a job and be paid. Asking if I planned to have children in the interview, I was 19. Asking if you are somebody who's willing to put in the time to make sure deadlines are met, work is done, or if you're the type of person who leaves when the workday is finished. This is generally corporate speak for, we will be forcing you to work unpaid overtime. There's a misery wall when walking into work. When you pass a certain point in the building the feeling changes significantly. If you know, you know. Any job ad that doesn't mention the name of the company should raise suspicions, doubly so if it's anything to do with sales. Got done by that trick once. Turned up to the interview and the job was going door to door selling vacuums for Kirby vacuums. If the job description has a non-descriptively massive salary range, $25,000 $100,000. The sink or swim technique. It was my first day as a cashier. I got a couple of hours of training. Then I was by myself and we were dead. All of a sudden this rush came in and I was asking for help. The manager goes, sink or swim, we're busy back here, figure it out. Dot. Lol I did but let me tell you customers were not happy because I still didn't know how to properly enter in orders, especially modifications. Anything that the manager says in the interview that doesn't line up with the job description. Yay we posted it's a manager level position, but this is actually a coordinator role. Yay the description says travel is 25% but it might be closer to 50 it just depends. We did post it as a remote job, but we prefer people to be in the office X days a week. Yay we phrase it that way in the job description because corporate says we have to. All of those are red flags. Anything a company is vague about should be a red flag. When they say, or try to make you sign, anything pertaining to not discussing your wages with other employees. That shit is illegal and it screams that people aren't being fairly compensated for their work. I've literally up and walked the fuck out of jobs for this. I went on an interview. They had me wait in the lobby. In the five minutes I was sitting there, three employees walked past me. The first just looked at me and laughed. The second said, leave. Leave while you can. The third made the sign of the cross at me. Later, during the interview, the hiring manager showed me the Zen room, which was a quiet room you got to go to for 10 minutes when you got too stressed out. I was offered the job. I declined. Edit. 1. They walked by separately, at different times too. You had to ask permission to use the Zen room. Competitive pay, but they won't tell you what the pay actually is in the posting or even the interview. I interviewed once at a very huge organization that had a site in the town I was living in, and these guys were so proud of the new top of the line facilities. When they took me on a tour they pointed out the lovely Zen garden area that was made for employees to go, unwind and clear their heads. The problem with it was this area was positioned directly across from all the higher-ups offices. Yeah, no. Poor communication during the hiring process. They're always hiring. Open interviews. It tells me that people leave faster than you can bring them in, and with good reason. We're a family here, no. We're co-workers. I don't love you. I wouldn't do anything for you. We have boundaries. I've always found the hiring process to be a pretty accurate reflection of how your time with the company will be. So, if they make you jump through a million hoops just to be hired you can expect any kind of raise or promotion to be the same. 
If they are asking you your thoughts on conflict then you can expect that you'll be working with at least one difficult person who is a known problem employee. If they say fast-paced, tight deadlines then expect to work overtime. If HR is a mess then don't expect good onboarding etc etc. If you get a tour and everything is old but they say, they're in the process of updating, yeah no they don't update shit. You're going to be working with broken out dates equipment. Nine tenths you're going to get in trouble when it breaks on you. To me it was a, we will start you low and we'll give you a ton of money later, they never do. Never happens. Sorry no money for your annual raise due to the pandemic, it's a lie. We're just like family. Work hard, play hard, you will work so hard, you and your colleagues will need to get totally fucked up at happy hours to cope with the stress. If many provisions in company policy say, except for employees in Colorado and California. Colorado and California have multiple statutes that are more employee friendly than the other 48 states. So the company policy is basically saying, we'll do X for employees where the state makes us, but fuck the rest of you. We work hard and we play hard. Translation, we require you to participate in our toxic workplace culture. It's hard to find good workers these days, equals. I don't pay enough. We work hard and play harder, usually means we like to be nosy about your personal life. The quality of the toilet paper in the bathroom. There are minimal if any cost savings to one ply and it just shows they couldn't care about you at all. Referring to the company as family, employers are not your family. Family can't fire you, saying you are work fam. Or anything else is a guilt trip to make you leave your real family and work extra hours for no pay. My company does this and it grosses me out. It works on our young hires but the older ones roll their eyes. Oh and saying, this isn't your typical 9-5, that means you're on call 24 sevenths. Also companies that have a cult following and make up their own words. Run, just run. When an employee quits or gets fired from the job and the company doesn't hire anyone new to replace them. It can be hard to tell as a red flag at first, but the temporary workload they added to your own over that was left over after the person left, slowly becomes your new permanent workload, without any changes to your pay or benefits to compensate for the additional tasks. The further out it goes without the position being filled, the larger and more obvious the red flag becomes. I once had a job that required a working interview as the final step in the interview process. I basically worked an entire day for free. At my job interview I got asked, how do you deal with drama in the workplace? Looking back, I was so stupid to accept that job. They get visibly and voically freaked out when you tell them you have no social media. The follow-up question of, everyone does, you have to, had made me walk out. A company that wants access to my personal family-only social media platforms is not a company I want to work for. I separate my personal and professional life. They have no business knowing about me or my family and anything going on therein. They do not need access to your Facebook, and should they gain it through another employee or other means, I would sue the fucking shit out of them for violating my right to privacy. Nobody works here for the money. Why should they work there, then? We're a good Christian company. I have never been fucked harder by an employer than ones that claim to be religious-based companies. I know people, rightfully, like to hate on HR. But if a company brags about, not having an HR department to deal with, expect him to be very disorganized at a minimum. Look in the parking lot. What is the general age and condition of the employees' cars compared to the owners and managers? You can tell a lot about a medium to largish company if they have a employee parking lot full. Unlimited time off means that you will never be taking time off, ever. Management will judge the hell out of you for attempting to take a mental health day or a vacation. The people who take the least time off will wear it like a badge of honor. The last place I worked like this, the owner would lecture us every year about how he's never taken Thanksgiving or Christmas off, and look how well the company is doing. Then he'd give you the stink eye when you wanted to take off to be with your family for those holidays. Anytime they are being sketchy, not being specific or giving you the runaround in regards to basic questions you'd ask them. Like expected work hours, pay and benefits. In software development, any take-home interview assignment that can't be finished in under four hours. Some shadier companies have been caught outsourcing labor for free this way, but even in the much less nefarious scenario where it really is just an evaluation, if a company has so little respect for your work-life balance that they're going to require a day's worth of unpaid labor just to interview, they're probably not going to respect it if they hire you either. Also, too much emphasis on how great their office amenities are often means they expect you to not leave the office. 
Usually the sweet spot is a decent snack selection and maybe a gym in the building if it's a shared office building. One foosball table or something isn't necessarily a red flag, but odds are nobody uses it. Whenever an ad says, flexible schedule, it never ever means that you can work when you want. It always means that they can schedule you any time week to week without giving you any consistency. Constant short staffing. Raises that are only cost of living. Inflation. Increases. Edit. Inserted. That. Family-owned businesses where several are working there. You will never be well paid or promoted. There's going to be a few siblings there that do absolutely nothing, but are going to be well paid. There are content just turning people over forever underneath them, but dangling a carrot. Any of. We work hard, but we play hard. We're a family here. Listing something like, fast-paced environment, as a benefit.